Osama gave a nice overview of kind of how uh, Google Play works, so it's going to be actually more about kind of the nuts and bolts or what developers should look for to actually get their apps in the market, uh, or Google Play. So and I'm actually uh, kind of it's getting close to noon right about now, and I'm sure you guys are kind of getting hungry and maybe a little hot here in Mountain View because it's, uh, it's getting a little warm in this room. So I'm going to kind of blow through these slides. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand. I'll maybe just take one or two um, during the presentation, then we can kind of take the rest offline. So uh, this is what the Google Play Store looks like on Google TV. Um, so I, I emphasize the because this is this is the Google Play Store. Um, if you have an app in the Google Play Store already for handheld devices, it may already be available to users to download or install on Google TV. Um, it's a little bit unlikely though because of the way that market filtering works. Uh, market filtering um, makes sure that that only apps that are supported on devices uh, make it to users that have those devices. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, this is actually the, the features that are supported by Google TV. It's a relatively small list compared to most other Android devices. I mean, that's because primarily because we, Google TV does not support, support things like uh, telephony. It doesn't have uh, kind of a broad sensor support. Um, but this is what we have. Um, the top one is probably looks a little bit new to you guys. So this is the, the Google TV feature. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a minute, but um, basically using that feature, you can target Google TV devices specifically. Uh, the next one, uh, hardware location should look pretty familiar, hardware location network. Uh, those are actually forgetting the, uh, the location of the user. I think Kristen actually had in his talk how you can use a location manager to find out uh, where the user is, at least at the zip code level. Uh, USB host, uh, that's actually one of my favorite ones. Um, Google TV allows users to actually plug in mass storage devices or um, human interface devices, USB HID devices, to control it. Um, but you can actually write your own drivers for applications, um, or for, for USB accessories in Google TV. So, and, and you do that via the USB host uh, feature. Uh, we support Wi-Fi, obviously, uh, live wallpapers. Um, and uh, there's one that was introduced in API level 13 that we support, and that's the, the landscape mode. So uh, if you include the landscape feature in your application, uh, that means that it will only be available on um, devices that support that feature, such as Google TV. Um, pretty much any other device does. Uh, the, the opposite of that, though, the portrait mode, uh, we don't support. And I'll talk a little bit about that caveat in a minute. So there's a couple special features. Uh, the one special feature is, is the touchscreen feature. So that feature, uh, you don't have to put that feature in the manifest in order for it to be required. It's the, the only feature that is on by default. Uh, so actually, to get your app on uh, in Google Play Store on Google TV, you have to make sure that you, you make that feature not required. And this is a little code snippet how to do that. Uh, basically, you just say touchscreen uh, touch faults in your manifest. Um, the, the other feature, the other special feature that I talked about, the Google Android TV feature, uh, that's if you want, actually want to target your app to Google TV devices, because the Google TV devices are the only class of devices, Android devices, that have that feature. Uh, a lot of developers will say, well, we're not supposed to really target devices. Why do you have that feature? Um, you're not actually targeting specific devices using that feature. You're, you're targeting a, a class of devices with certain characteristics. Um, that feature is kind of a shortcut to saying my application supports D-pads. Um, it's not a touchscreen device. Um, you know, basically, you support the 10-foot UI, 16 by 9 resolution, etc. So that's kind of a catch-all for a bunch of TV-specific features that we've, uh, we've put in there to make it convenient for users. Or developers. Uh, there's one uh, tricky thing with Android. Uh, some permissions actually imply features. Uh, so if you include any of these features in this list, um, and I've categorized them here, uh, they'll actually imply features uh, that aren't supported by Google TV. Um, Bluetooth is kind of an obvious one. None of the current uh, Google TV devices support Bluetooth. Uh, camera, none of the devices have cameras built into them. Uh, the location, this is only lo uh, fine location. Uh, which is related to GPS. Uh, microphones, the devices currently don't have microphones. And then the whole suite of telephony uh, features. So, so no making calls on your Google TV, uh, which would be kind of an interesting use case anyway. But um, So basically, if you, if you include any of these permissions, uh, these features are actually going to be implicitly required by your app and actually will make it uh, not available for Google TV to download, Google TV users to download on Google Play, or from Google Play. Uh, the workaround, though, is that if, if, let's say, you want to have one app in the market and uh, you want that app available on handheld devices and Google TV devices, um, you can actually include that permission because you have to use, include the permission to use the APIs. 
uh, you can Im you can explicitly say that the feature is not required. So you, you make the implicit feature not required through uh, uh, through including the uses feature tag for it. And uh, you can optionally use the feature at runtime. So when the app is, is up and running, you can actually check the platform, see if the platform supports a specific feature. And if it does, you know, trigger the micro microphone support or camera feature in your application. Uh, the trick with this, though, is that you're not only going to want to programmatically check for the feature before you use the feature, um, but you're also probably going to want to hide, uh, hide the widgets that aren't used on Google TV. For example, if your app has a microphone button or a camera button, uh, make sure you hide that on Google TV device. And basically, you do that in your iCreate method. Um, check for the feature, and if microphone isn't supported, uh, call view dot set visibility hidden. Um, and that'll allow you to, to actually um, to use features uh, that are required implicitly on the device. So um, this actually works not only with um, you know, implicit features. This also works with other features that don't have permissions. Uh, for example, like a USB accessory mode. A USB accessory mode, there is no permission for it. Um, you, can actually, uh, you can actually check for that feature at runtime, though, and, and use it only if the device supports it. A Google TV does not support USB accessory mode, just, just host mode. Uh, another thing that you can actually uh, kind of target devices with Google TV, or target devices, uh, with your app's manifest or in your app's manifest is um, screen filters. Uh, there's two filter modes or two ways to, to uh, filter on screens. Uh, one is using the support screens method. Uh, this is kind of recommended because this is um, uh, by default the, uh, the screens are um, supported. So if you don't specify anything, for example, for small screens in your manifest, um, your application will be available on devices with small screens. Uh, so, so you can actually use this tag for, um, for example, to just target your application to large screens. If you want to, let's say, uh, run your app across um, Google TV devices and uh, tablets, you could say, well, it's only available on large screens and extra large screens. Um, and then you can actually just uh, exclude all mobile devices or handheld devices or phone devices. Uh, the other way you can do uh, to filter based on screens is actually using compatible screens. Uh, we, we generally do not recommend you use compatible screens, however, because it, it's, it's more or less an advanced feature. And um, only what you specify in the compatible screens um, is supported. So it's, it's not default true, it's default false, if you specify anything in there. So in this example here, I've said that, well, I'm, I want to support screen size large TVDPI and screen size large XHDPI. Um, that means, actually, any other device uh, besides um, devices that meet those two classifications are going to be excluded. Um, so you can really kind of go overboard with the uh, compatible screens features, why, why we don't recommend using it. Another thing that actually will kind of uh, either get your app filtered out from uh, the Google Play on Google TV or actually cause some usability problems is uh, portrait mode. So portrait mode, like I mentioned before, is not supported by Google TV. Um, so if you have, for example, uh, screen orientation portrait on an activity in your manifest and you actually bring up that activity, uh, Google TV will actually bring up a toast. It'll say, you know, portrait mode is not supported and it'll, it'll actually close your app for you. Uh, so you do not want any activity that is going to be used on Google TV. Make sure you're not forcing it into portrait mode. Um, the other way, so you can actually force activities into portrait mode using um, programmatically, using the set requested orientation in your code. Um, likewise, once your app actually, or your view actually, your, I'm sorry, your activity gets switched into portrait mode, uh, Google TV will actually close your application because we do not support portrait mode on the device. Um, and the third thing, I mentioned this earlier, there is a portrait mode feature. This is for API level 13. If you have this in the manifest, actually your, your app will be filtered out from the market on Google TV, or the Google Play on Google TV, so it won't show up at all. So kind of the issue here is actually the first two, your, your app will show up on Google TV devices, uh, but the user won't be able to use them. So th this could actually get you some bad reviews. So you should really make sure that none of the activities that are being used in your application on Google TV uh, require portrait mode. So between the screen filters, um, the, the feature support, or the feature filters, and actually the um, uh, API levels or SDK versions, you can actually double check this uh, before you actually bring or release your app application to market. 
Uh, there's a cool call, a tool called AAPT, and uh, I can't say that I know what that stands for. But if you run AAPT dump badging on your APK, uh, it will it'll actually show you what the market knows about your app um, based on what's in the manifest. So here you can see that the what you're going to want to check, or what you can see here, is that the SDK levels check out because uh, Google TV supports SDK level 12 or 13. Um, we're only using permissions that are available, well, only using valid permissions that don't cause any implicit features. Uh, you can see that in here that we're using the common Google Android TV feature, which means that the, this app, or this APK is targeted for Google TV devices specifically. And uh, that we made the hardware touchscreen feature not required. Uh, and like I said, this is really, really important. Uh, if you want your app to be on Google TV devices, you must say that that feature is not required explicitly in your APK. What do you want? Um, and again, a little later on, uh, you can see the supported, so supported screens part. Um, in this specific example, uh, we support all three modes. So, sent to um, rotated. And so once you have, you've checked your app out, you, you have your man manifest straightened out, um, everything looked good with um, APT, you want to get your app in the market, you're going to have to make a decision whether or not you want to release um, a single app or store listing, uh, but, but have multiple APKs in it. Uh, you could also do a single APK. A uh, single app with a single APK, sorry, the order is a little off, or you can actually do multiple apps. And I'll explain this a little bit uh, individually. So a single app or single store listing with a single APK means that you have one application that is either targeted just for Google TV um, or, or specific devices, or you have one APK that actually works across multiple devices. Um, some developers actually do this. They'll have one APK that works for for phones, tablets, and Google TV. Um, the, kind of the best thing about this is that applications that do this, they actually have shared reviews. So when a, when a user actually reviews the app um, on their handheld device, that actually gets added to the, the total of reviews for for all three uh, platforms. So this actually will actually get your application promoted uh, much more quickly. Uh, you can also do, oh, kind of the negative side about that, though, is that uh, a single AP, APK can actually be kind of large and complex. Um, you're going to have to make sure that you have all the resources separated out for the different screen sizes. Um, you're going to have to actually include assets for all the different screen sizes, etc. cetera. Um, so, so your one APK can get pretty big, um, especially if you're including things like full screen assets for Google TVs, um, which will make the download time a lot slower. So the alternative then, or one alternative is if, if you want to have a, uh, one app for multiple devices is you can have a single APK or single app listing in the, the store, but you can have multiple APKs. Um, again, you get shared reviews, which is a big benefit to this. Um, so it doesn't matter which APK the user is downloading the device. Uh, when they re rate that uh, rate that application, it, it actually goes at the application level, not the APK level. Um, the negative side about this, though, is that you have to maintain multiple APKs. Um, a lot of applications, even though you know, your handheld version and your Google TV version do essentially the same thing, you're going to actually have to compile two separate APKs and launch them and maintain them separately um, in Google Play Store. So there's a, a little bit of overhead and maintenance, um, but you get the benefit of, of having two kind of streamlined APKs that you can target for different devices or classes of devices. And the other option is actually multiple apps. So you can have multiple store listings. And you'll actually see this quite a bit with Google TV. Uh, a lot of developers will have, um, well, let me see, think of a good example. Um, so there's uh, Redux for Google TV, and there's also a Redux tablet application. So um, kind of the, the good thing about this is that you, um, you can actually have two different revenue models for your applications. Um, those applications you know, can actually can have completely different use cases and user interfaces, which is nice. Uh, the bad thing about this, though, is that, that both applications or app listings are going to have different reviews or different sets of reviews. So, um, well, oh, actually, I'm, let's, let me go over the pros first. So, so one pro is that they actually have separate reviews. Um, this is good in that um, you can actually see how users like the different apps individually. So if you have different features in your handheld or, or Google TV app, uh, you can see what features they like in those apps and potentially port them over into the other application. Um, and it also kind of gives you kind of the benefit of being able to, um, you know, kind of if, if one app is getting um, really positive feedback, but one app is getting negative feedback, uh, they're not all blurred together. Um, you know, one app will actually kind of raise above the other, and then you can actually use that to tailor kind of how you uh, improve your other application. 
So the negative side of this, of having multiple apps, um, so you're going to have to maintain multiple APKs again. Um, and again, you know, negative side of the part, or negative side of the uh, separate reviews is that um, they're not all bundled into one, so, so your app is going to actually uh, rise up a little bit slower. So multiple APK support, um, we think this is actually pretty beneficial. It's a good thing to do. Um, the way you actually do this is you have one app listing in the market, and that app listing has, you can upload multiple APKs. Um, the, the APKs have to be differentiated somehow, and there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, the supported screens is one way you can do it. Um, and those are the two tags that I mentioned before. Um, so if you have uh, one app that you use for large screens and one app for small and medium sized screens, uh, or one APK for large screens and one APK for small and medium uh, sized screens, uh, the, the marking can differentiate and will target the, the appropriate APK to the size of the screen on the device. Uh, the other thing you can do is API level. So if you, for, for example, want to have uh, a you know, Froyo and Gingerbread app, you can you can pick the appropriate APK, API levels. Uh, and then you want another app for, for tablets and TV, you can set it for API level 12, well, 11 for tablets, 12 or later for TV. Um, the other thing you can do, actually, it'll, the market will differentiate APKs based on OpenGL texture compression formats. I personally don't know too, too much about this, but, um, you know, this is actually generally for game developers. So if you want to... Uh, um, compress textures differently for different types of uh, platforms to make sure that you have small um, small textures on one platform versus the other platform or smaller textures, then you can uh, base it on the compression formats. So really the easiest way, though, to have multiple APKs on Google TV is, so on, in your Google TV APK, what you'll want to do is, again, make sure that the uh, hardware touchscreen feature is disabled. Um, you're going to want to, want to re require the Google Android TV feature. And then you're going to want to differentiate based on the, the SDK version, pick 12 or 13. Um, at this point, we're generally saying developers should focus more on 13 because there's some features actually added to the uh, APA level 13 for Google TV. Um, but like your Logic reviews, they're, they're currently on 12. So if you do launch your application with APA level 13, it's, it's going to not be available on uh, Logic reviews until they take the, uh, the next update. So for your non-Google TV APK, the one that you want for handheld devices, uh, what you're going to want to do is make sure you leave the touchscreen feature in. Um, so this is uh, this makes sure that the um, this is actually how that the market will ultimately differentiate uh, which apps get loaded where. Um, and then you do not want to add the uh, the Google TV feature. And you can pick a different SD SDK version besides 12 or 13. So you know if you're picking Fourier or Gingerbread, you know, pick something like uh, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, something lower. So so since you have different AP minimal SDK levels, um, the market knows that they're or Google Play knows that they're different APKs, and then when they're actually distributed in the, uh, to the users, uh, the user will get the appropriate one based on the features that are available on the device. Um, supporting multiple screens, um, you know this is something that, that Android does. So if you're if you're you want to have a single APK. Uh, you can actually have layouts and drawables that are for basically for Google TV devices as opposed to handheld devices. Uh, these are just a handful of the uh, the qualifiers that you can use to do that. Um, things like no DPI, uh, TV DPI, XH DPI. Uh, you do this by saying layout dash qualifier or or uh, drawable dash qualifier. Uh, landscape orientation, long orientation. Um, that's saying that it's a, a landscape mode uh, display, or it's a long display, which means that the, the width is longer than the height. Um, and then in API level 13, you can actually specify based on how many DPs or uh, density-dependent pixels the display has. Um, so one thing to note about this, though, is that uh, Google TV, even though it's a landscape device, uh, the width is always the shortest dimension. So it's, it's actually a 540 by 960 DP display, not a 960 by 540. So if you if you do want to use width and height to uh, to actually specify um, resources, layouts, or drawables, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you uh, you invert the the sizes. So before you launch on TV, we, we definitely recommend that you test it for TVs. Um, a couple things that you're going to want to do is uh, <coughs> test the screen sizes. You want to test it at 720 and 1080 both. Um, it ends up that most users have 1080p displays, but um, there's still a lot of 720p devices out there. Uh, when things scale, uh, things can actually kind of go wrong. So, so absolutely test on both resolutions before you launch your app to market. Uh, you're also going to want to test for overscan. 
Um, and the way you want to do this is, is basically um, just factory reset your device and skip the, the overscan setting uh, at the beginning where you actually push the blue bars out. Um, or you can actually go back in and, and readjust the, the overscan settings without factory resetting. Um, but the idea is, is you'll want to put it in the default mode because it, it ends up there's a, there's a lot of users out there that don't actually adjust the overscan settings and, and they're actually gonna, your app is not going to get the full resolution of the screen. Uh, you, you'll want to test uh, contrast and brightness levels because uh, a lot of TVs don't have very good gamma correction, especially older ones. So um, basically just crank, crank the brightness up, crank the brightness down, do the inverse for the contrast as well. And the last thing is uh, very TV specific. Uh, you'll, you're going to want to test different TV display modes. Um, most TVs nowadays, they support a handful of different modes uh, for doing things like, well, you're going to have a different mode for watching uh, sporting events, a different mode for watching cinematic uh, shows. Um, the, what the TV does in this case is it actually um, uh, adjusts the contrast levels and uh, color saturation for you. Uh, this can actually kind of screw around with, uh, with um, how you have your, your user interface or laid out. Or not, not laid out, but um, kind of the colors of your application. So if you, if you have buttons, for example, and you're using a light gray uh, focus highlight, um, that can actually get and, and maybe a, a, a dark gray focus highlight, but a light gray button. Um, you, you can actually lose the contrast when you uh, try these different display modes. So, so try just a few of them and see how your app looks. Um, I, I wouldn't say you have to test for every display mode that's out there for TVs. Uh, once you've you know, have your apps manifest straightened out, um, you've tested it out, you want to get it in the market, um, you're going to want to prepare your marketing materials, you need a good app description. Um, I mean, by good, I mean you want something that's short and the user can actually get the idea about what your app does in about uh, two to three lines. You can have a bunch more information on there, but, but in general, users don't scroll all the way down to the bottom of the description to read it through. Uh, so put the very important stuff there right at the top. Uh, you need at least two screenshots, and we, we highly recommend that you use uh, HD screenshots, uh, 1280 by 720. Uh, some of the documentation doesn't mention this, but when you actually deploy an application, uh, 1280 by 720 uh, screenshots is, a, is an option. You also want a high-res uh, app icon. Uh, these are both actually required when you, actually, when you deploy an app. Uh, the last thing is uh, promotion and feature graphics. Um, we just say you should put these in by default because... Uh, a lot of times we'll see an app in the market and we'll say, well, this is, this is kind of a nice app. We might want to feature this. Oh, but wait, they, they don't have promotion and feature graphics. Well, we're going to have to actually reach out to the developer and have them you know, put these together in their application. Um, a little bit of extra work on our end. We just say, well, just put it in there, you know, and you might be pleasantly surprised that your app is featured someday. So um, once you get that, once you have all, all your promotional material straightened out, um, you want to create a signed APK. And uh, be sure you do not lose your signing key. Uh, we, we've seen developers that have done that. Um, it's, it's not a great process for actually fixing that. So, so keep, your, keep your signing key somewhere where, where you, you're not, not going to lose it and you know you're not going to lose it for the next 10, 15 years. Um, last thing, you know, go to the publishing site. Uh, upload your APK and your assets and make sure you hit the publish button. Uh, there's two buttons on there, publish and save. Uh, save will actually save everything you've done in terms of uploading your APK, uploading your promotional information, uh, but it'll not make your app live for, for users to download. Um, that's what happens when you push the publish button. So there's two states for apps, um, uploaded and published. So if you need any more information on, on actually publishing applications, uh, this URL here basically has everything laid out um, perfectly. So this is uh, from the Android team. So everything you need to know, um, including everything I've talked about today, uh, with the exception of the Google TV features, is in there. Um, in terms of Google TV, uh, check out our developer guidelines or developer.google.com. Uh, we have quite a bit of information there, too. Um, Osama already talked about featured apps, um, so I'm not going to really cover this too much. But uh, again, so we have multiple featured areas. Uh, we have the hero banner. We have kind of our featured for TV section. Um, that's actually broken down in two areas. We have a featured TV, featured for TV section, and then there's a what we call the below, below the fold section. Uh, you don't see the apps in the below the fold. That the user actually has to hit the view all. Um, so, so if your app actually does get featured on Google TV, uh, it can fall into one of those three categories. Um, apps that aren't featured in Google Play and Google TV actually go in the other apps and other games sections. Uh, discoverability is actually not that great. Um, you know, users. The apps are actually organized by shelves or categories there, and they're ordered by um, popularity. So if you're just launching an app um, in, in the Google Play Store, 
chances are it's not going to be ranked very high in the popularity rankings. So, um, so you, you really want to make sure you, your app has a lot of polish um, and potentially featureable by the time you launch it. Uh, if you have an app and you've launched it, um, definitely let us know. We we want to see it. We want to you know potentially promote it for um, for featuring. So um, either check out this URL or take a screenshot of this uh, this QR code. Uh, basically, take you to a form. You can um, fill out that your app is ready. We get the information and we check it out. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think we're pretty much ready for lunch. So if anybody has any questions, I'm going to take them offline. Um, but raise your hand so I know who you are real quick. Okay, great.